Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Zdenex English Podcast. It has been a while and it has also been a while for my guest today because welcome back, Rob, from English with Rob podcast and YouTube channel. Hi, Zdenek. Uh, it's good to be back um, and back in the English teaching online world. I've been away for over a year studying and um, now I have time to get back into this again. Feels good. Studying, so the shoe was on the other foot. Oh, yeah, wow. Oh. Oh. Idiot. It's only been like Idiot. less than a minute, Idiot. and Stenic already set off the idiom alarm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the shoe was on the other foot. I think that idiom is pretty clear, right? The, the other person was doing the thing that the other person is supposed to be doing. Yeah, the shoe was on the other It's foot. I was no longer the teacher, I was the student. It's a relatively transparent idiom. It's not opaque yes yeah. so, <laughs> so um, one of the questions i wanted to ask you was uh, how is the old good old idiom alarm is it is it dusty because obviously you haven't been really that prolific uh, when it comes to your podcast although you have released a podcast uh, recently uh, which was pretty good it was about euphemisms i really liked it check it out english with rob podcast it's it's amazing those of you watching this on youtube Uh, you can see on screen there's um, a little label saying English with Rob podcast. I hope I got that right. Yeah, I just saw that pop up. I thought that was automatic. That's amazing. Well done. <laughs> Did you type that while you were talking? No, I can't. Oh. I can't. I'm not that good at multitasking, <laughs> so I, I prepared it actually. Oh, you know why? Even more why I prepared it, Rob, because I I have to tell you something. Yeah, you you already know, but I, I I'm telling the listeners, I guess then, and the viewers mustn't forget about those. I do actually feel very guilty right now, Rob. I've been feeling guilty for the past 10 days or so. Okay. <laughs> or has it been I thought we were going that? to keep this quiet, but okay, you can you can, <laughs> you can let no, the cat I, out of the bag. Oh. oh, the idiom alarm's not working. Okay, never mind. I also have to get it off my chest, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the idiom alarm. Idiot. going. Okay. Maybe it only works <laughs> when I speak. It Maybe. It's risk. a guest one. I can't remember how it works exactly, but I plugged my, my podcast recording machine in and the idiom alarm was still there, still picks up the odd idiom. The problem is, the problem with the idiom alarm is that it breaks the conversation. Um, but yeah. That's okay. That's okay. I think so it's... So we're going to let the cat out of the bag. You're going to get it off your chest. Let, let's do that, yeah. <laughs> in the end. I mean, it's about time, yeah? Uh-huh. Everyone is um, waiting with a bated breath. Is that correct? With bated breath, yeah. <laughs> okay, without a... Uh, got it. Teacher, thank you for that. Uh, so, basically, um, I owe you uh, an apology, Rob, because uh, the worst nightmare of a podcaster came true. Uh, no, my microphone didn't break. Um, no. But I, <laughs> I recorded an episode with you, which you, of course, know because you were the one yeah, recording it with me. Mm -hmm. That was last week, I guess, or was it 14 uh, days two, ago? Two weeks ago. Two weeks yeah. ago. You see how long I've been feeling guilty? 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> Until I could finally tell you in person uh, that I'm sorry. Because um, the recording we made um, somehow got deleted. Now, I said it as if I wasn't the one to be blamed for that, but that's right. Honestly... You used the passive tense very <laughs> diplomatically. Not I deleted yeah. it. It was deleted. It got deleted. Yeah, it got deleted. Yeah. Although, the only person we can point a finger at is really me because I was the one pressing the delete button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but believe it or not, it wasn't what I intended to do. I did it by accident because I was at the time I was stressed and I needed to record a, a different podcast or what, it might have been a YouTube live or something. And the service that I use uh, basically uh, told me that I didn't have enough um, space on my on the you know like there's a, there's space um, allowance for you mm -hmm. and I didn't I reached. The limit I exceeded. I was exceeding the limit already, which was 50 gigabytes. And so, what what happens when what what I do when that happens is that I start deleting the episode, the previous episodes. And usually, I have I will have already published all those episodes, 
And so I don't really look at it much because I'm like, oh, okay, every, this. I, I'm, I was just looking at the at the size of those episodes and previous videos, and I was like, okay, this is. And then I then I deleted yours as well by mistake. That's the whole yeah. story. I only, I only, <laughs> just before we got on this uh, new podcast, got on the camera again. Just before I, I just finished crying about it. So. <laughs> two weeks is about the right amount of time to wait <laughs> but Stenic, don't worry about it I've done it as well I've have you I think it's been three times now once I had two podcasts on a phone and the phone some some small thing was wrong with it and I needed to um do a factory reset and forgot yeah. to take off the all the files I needed before I did the factory reset and um another one uh well, this is really embarrassing. I recorded a podcast with Luke from Luke's English Podcast. And oh, when no. I edited it back, I, I was, <laughs> it was early days. And I just yeah. thought it doesn't work. It, it wasn't very good. I was um, not nervous. I was self-conscious. Like, self-conscious. I was stumbling over my words and I'd planned a lot of things like games and things which didn't work at all. Yeah. And Luke was really cool about it. He said, don't worry. I said, Luke, I'm sorry. I wasted your time. Um, so I mean, you felt said, exactly we'll do, how we'll empty time. I'm feeling now, but I think maybe it's a bit different because I already know you. I mean, it's like it's we've done a few podcasts before, so you, hopefully you believe me that I didn't do this on purpose as well. No, of course, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. All right, uh, okay, so that's out the way. It, it is embarrassing, you know. Um, I'm absolutely mortified about it. Sorry, I just wanted to use that word. It's not really. But <laughs> I want, no, it's I a very to... good word in this yeah. Um, context. Yeah, I'm I wanted to use that word for the sake of using that word, not really that I was that keen on. It's also a, that, a collocation, right? You also you normally say absolutely mortified. You never say very mortified or completely mortified. It's always yeah. absolutely mortified. That's that's because mortified is a strong adjective, so you cannot say very mortified. It's basically you have got a group of adjectives. And those um, those strong adjectives um, are a category of adjectives that cannot be used with very, cannot be graded, mm. and mortified is one of them. Yeah. So you ha um, but you can use absolutely with them. Yeah. I'm not okay. teaching you, of course, Rob. Don't, I'm don't... teaching. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's something that I hadn't uh, hadn't occurred to me, uh, and I'm learning too. But obvious, uh, obviously, don't, don't, can, don't be can... absolutely mortified. It's, uh, the other good thing about it, the other reason I don't mind is that I like talking to you, Zenik. Hi, my name is Damien and I'm from Poland. I like the Achievers Chamber because it provides a supportive and motivational environment that inspires me to reach my goals every day. For more information about the Achievers Chamber, go to teachersdenek.com. I like talking to you, Zenik. It's like, you know, oh. just, well, I'm chatting with a mate. So it's just another opportunity to sit down and have a it, chat. And this one will be the, different and better. Absolutely. Is that, is, that your, is that a sneaky way of sort of implying to me that I, sh I should delete this one as no, well? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, yeah. Zenik's so desperate to chat with me. He's deleting it every time. Oh, Rob, I'm sorry. We have to talk again next week. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, okay. He's not even hit record, have you? Uh, uh, oh, shit. I have, I have. No, you have. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's very, very good of you to, to actually ask me that question. Very clever of you to do that. I see yeah. it in the corner there. It says recording. Oh, okay. <laughs> it so might say one thing and do another thing as well. You know, you never know with this. So Something's yeah. clicking. I don't know what it is. It's some cable. It's that. Okay. I can barely hear it. But... No, you can't hear it? Okay, then I won't worry about it. Yeah. Okay, well, this was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. Now, now that we are doing this again, aren't you afraid that we might say exactly the same things and that means it will get a bit boring for us? And as a result of that, when we are bored, the listeners will suffer too because obviously that will affect our performance here. <laughs> Um, no, I don't think so. If we say the same things, you know, it's like practice makes perfect. We've already practiced speaking and now we're going to say it again. Maybe it will, I won't say some of the things that I regretted saying last time, but I'm more worried about, uh, your, uh, level of tiredness. What time is it there, Zdenek, in Vietnam? It's like past two, it two is, in the morning. Yeah, it is 2.30 AM. It's okay because I'm a night owl, Rob. 
and I'm owl. used to I'm I'm used to staying up late, and that's exactly what's happening now. So it's not really a big deal. Yeah, um, I remember you said that, but I, I mean, there's late yeah. and then there's two starting a podcast at, at two just, in the morning. Well, there were also some really good jokes we told, of course. So that's that's going to be lost. Well, unfortunately, there'll, there'll be but... more. I don't remember them, but there will be more. <laughs> Yeah, so no problem. We'll just we'll just keep going. No deja vu going to happen here. Hopefully. Um, okay, so. Uh, Daddy, Daddy, ah, oh, it's my kids. Daddy, I thought it was a, one of your jingles. Daddy, 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 Daddy. <laughs> Shut up! I'm talking to Zdenek from Zdenek's English podcast. <laughs> okay. It was on. a jingle, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah he... for, a <laughs> for a second, I thought. I just wanted to use your own catchphrase, but I recorded that earlier. I thought that would be funny. <laughs> to be honest, you really made it look like here on the YouTube channel. We could see Rob's facial expression. He really got me almost. Yeah, <laughs> you almost prank pranked me, Rob, because I was really, I really thought for a second that those kids were for real. But it, yeah. it's pre it's pre recorded. It's pre recorded. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but I did, want to, I did want to explain that as well because I didn't want people oh, okay. thinking that I'm just shouting at my kids, shut up, <laughs> talking to Zdenek from Zdenek's English podcast. Right, right, right. And especially to your kids who might who might find this recording uh, uh, 10 years from now or something. And then uh, so? they might, they might be... be like, is this how you brought me up, daddy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. I think, I don't know if they would seek this out in 10 years. Maybe. Um, you never know. Hi, kids. Um, <laughs> thanks for recording that for me earlier, just before you went to bed. Yeah, they're in bed now. Uh, to answer your question, I've got three daughters, and their ages are nine, six, and four. Or, in 10 years' time, <laughs> 19, 16, and 14. A, a thought just occurred to me. I, w I wanted to ask you a weird question. How do you remember their age? Because it always changes, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But it is a stupid question. You are their father, after all. So you yeah. just calc calculated from the year they were born, I guess. <laughs> well, I don't even do that. I just, you know, every year, I just, after every birthday, I have to just change one of them slightly. <laughs> you memorize as well. You memorize. Yeah. It's the Until names that I, I forget all the time. That's the problem. Really? No. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice one. Um, so apart from being busy with your kids, of course, um, Rob, we have to ask you because it's been a while since we had had you on this podcast. So uh, what have you been up to? Yeah, well, like I mentioned, I've been studying. Uh, I've, I was studying a, a PGCE course, which means that what? I'm now PGCE. <laughs> uh, what, what do they stand for? Primary? No. Oh, I should know this. Just qualified. Um, Let me look I it mean, up. it's it's not... It's not going to be one of the questions in, in the exam anyway, I think. So Oh there was I was lucky there wasn't an exam. Uh, oh. postgraduate certificate in education. Are uh, they get you because PG is actually one word, postgraduate. Oh, I see. Postgraduate certificate in education. But but basically it's the qualification, the English qualification, British qualification you need to work in a school. So until really? now I've I've been English teacher with private students with uh, business English students in various companies and uh, now I'm, I'm in school and I'm teaching uh, pr primary I'm teaching primary which is the younger kids I have a that's, class of 22 uh, six and seven year olds that's quite a what's what is the expression like a u-turn right that's quite a big big change it's a big change yeah um, there were some pull factors i wanted more stability in my job and um i wanted i wanted to have colleagues again because you know when i'm sure you know this and we actually talked about this last time when you're a solo english teacher teaching mostly online you, you speak to your students and you have a relationship with them but they are also customers so it's not it's not the same as it. a colleague relationship and i think yeah just being in a you know, a staff room and, and having people to talk to about your challenges, your troubles and having people to help you with that on a day to day basis. Um, you know, we, we, we chatted and I, I would chat with other English teachers as well. But it's not the same as, you know, being in person and having colleagues no. there the whole time. 
absolutely. You also mentioned stability so, there. Stability that was one of the factors. I mean, I'm quite surprised that in um, business English environment, whatever language school it was, they don't provide you with stable, solid chairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only I had a applause jingle. Yeah, good. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I um, thought about this for a long time. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was so now your 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 chair the whole time. I was sturdy, teaching sturdy, good material, you know, like some... yeah. I say that, but I think it's actually the thing that's making the noise here. I'm picking up. <laughs> um, I meant I meant a primary school chair actually, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a, a terrible terrible joke. You see, that's that's the that's the risk here. Like when if I have to talk at <laughs> almost three a.m., the jokes, the quality of jokes is even worse than <laughs> when. It's okay. Yeah, it just it, makes my jokes eight. seem better, so I'm happy. All right, yeah, well, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> you planned <laughs> that's it. Why that's I why you this one at this time. Yeah, next time we we'll do <laughs> four in the morning, and that will be hilarious, and you'll be just <laughs> pitiful, <laughs> a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, yeah, nice. stability. So, I actually, when I was working for Four Words, which I was doing during my studies as well, um, I had a nice contract with them, but but then I wasn't intending to go straight into a school but you know a, a colleagues and a contract with all the health care benefits and um insurance because i live in germany and working as a freelancer you have to pay all of these things out of your own pocket but when you have a salaried job you know it's all sorted out for you so that was another pull factor as well yeah yeah and just having kids made me more comfortable working with kids because when I, I used to teach kids for the British Council in, in Paris with Luke from Luke's English podcast back in 2014, 2015. And I taught kids and adults. And in those days, the kids classes were my least favorite classes, but it was a different context because they were kids who were coming to have language lessons on a Saturday or all through the summer or after school, you yeah. know, when they're already tired and they just don't want to be there. So of course, of course. the behavior, the motivation wasn't great. And you would only see them once a week. So it was difficult, yeah. apart from the summer classes, it was difficult to like establish a rapport and routines and things like this. And I was very inexperienced, but now um, I'm much more comfortable yeah. with it. And I, and I enjoy it, seeing seeing the development in the kids and getting to know their personalities and seeing how, how their personalities work with each other in the classroom. Um, it's really good. And yeah, the PGCE has really equipped me well with lots of uh, different strategies for teaching and behavior management and all those sorts of things. Yeah. So when that, when that big moment came along of making the decision, you just basically said to yourself four words, I need a change. Four words. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Yeah, that doesn't work. That you see. Um, actually, I told I, you. I, <laughs> I had to count it. No, I had to count it. It's me that's tired. Uh, well, four words is a is a great company, and I was making lots of videos for them on 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 TikTok and YouTube, yep. and I hope to uh, still do some more of that in the future. That might happen. Um, but yeah, I, I and I wasn't expect like i wanted to do the qualification to have it for security for future job prospects but and i wasn't expecting to get a good job offer straight away but i, I did yeah. and it's a school that's just around the corner from me so i couldn't uh pass up that opportunity that's a, that's amazing just around the corner do you mean like you leave your house you close the door and then wow. just around the corner it's there it's or is it more like, is it further away than that <laughs> Well, it's it's a five minute drive or a twenty minute cycle ride. So ah, it's a big corner so, that it's just around. So, but you know so, that that's a, a is it an idiom so it, just around the corner? So I just wanted oh, to sorry. say it's one of those one of those your one of those your one of those your that doesn't sound right, does it? No, no, one wake of up, Stenic. you're too tired. <laughs> <laughs> one of your those that doesn't work either. <laughs> one of those. Ah, I know what I have to do. It's one of those euphemisms of yours. That's yeah. how I fix it. <laughs> oh, I hope you won't 
weren't hoping for the euphemisms jingle because I don't have that loaded up. <laughs> That's one of the best jingles you've ever made, by the way. I think. Yeah, thanks. You actually, I released that podcast. That that was the. Okay, we we mentioned that podcast episode that I released recently, but I actually recorded that over a year ago uh, with Shireen from An English Nerd. Check it out because she is also fantastic yep. on that episode and in all of her English teaching content. Uh, and I was really, really happy with that that jingle. So I'm happy that that one went out. It's it's catchy and mm -hmm. good harmonies, good lyrics, even if I say so myself. Um, and I was happy listening back to it that nothing really dated it. So any, if I hadn't said anything, everybody would just think I'd recorded it last week. So the, your hiatus, it was about one year or something like that. But when I listen to this episode, it's like nothing, nothing changed. You know, I know you recorded it before, but still, mm. like it felt like you haven't left. I hope. But in the, in the video version, I'm I look a bit younger and a bit skinnier. Like, you know, studying. Um, was really bad for me because I was just down here in the basement at my desk studying and making videos for four words and teaching lessons for four words the whole time. And I was just eating junk food. I've got some right here, yeah. actually. Look at this. Some, uh, oh. Tortillas, Crisps, and, uh, tortillas. And, and some yeah. dip. Mm. Um, it's a bad habit. I It sometimes happens to me too. So don't worry. What I try to do is to eat more nuts, you know, uh, I feel mm. like they're he and also healthier. move to a country where you sweat the whole time helps probably. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. When, when I lived in Cambodia <laughs> for three years, I, I got really, really skinny because heat. It, it, I, I don't have an appetite when it's so hot, and also the sweat is coming out of me the whole time. That uh, really lose it, weight. It took me one, uh, one month to lose six kilos. When mm. I came here, it was just so quick, like just like this, you know. So, yeah, I have now managed to remain at uh, quite quite a good weight. I haven't had I I haven't weighed this for maybe fifteen years. It's like eighty two kilos, eighty three kilos. <laughs> that hasn't happened like for fifteen years or something. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big uh, it's a big life change, but yeah, <laughs> that's one method of weight loss. Yeah. So obviously, I'm very happy that uh, you have made this change and you sound quite happy about it as well. It's, your job is just around the corner. It's a change. Personally, I, we have spoken about this. I, 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 I would find it a little bit hard to work with um, very young kids. I don't I, I don't know if would money sway me. It's possible because, well, the, you know, not not the money I'm on. <laughs> I don't think that was, it's not, you know, it's all. Teaching in a school is also not the highest it's, paid job out there. I know, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like it's you, you, it's like you put you think put things on on the on the scales, and then you have to like, okay, is it worth? If I think maybe I would get paid more if I taught younger kids here, like in Vietnam. I don't know. I, there's there's a, there's a huge demand for that for mm. for teachers for teachers and um, everyone wants to wants their kids to to learn from from a very very young age but i don't i'm not sure you know if I, if it if it would be worth the money for me it's just i just don't enjoy teaching these little <laughs> that pause brats. was too long <laughs> brats <laughs> no uh, yeah Spoiler. well they're only brats if you let them be brats yeah. um but well that's not true um uh, yeah I... yeah it's 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 you know you have to find your, your what, what your what, what are your strong skills and where your stress levels are and what what um makes those stress levels fly off and get higher because yeah nobody wants mm. stress at work yeah exactly no it's just it's just i don't enjoy myself and also it's just about the type of humor i can do with the, with the older kids with teenagers and, and especially adults it's just a, so much different and also, I like to make board games and like a little bit more complex, let's say, activities. I like to create my own activities. And it's just, I just don't know. I, I'm not sure if it would, it would work with little. little yeah. Kids. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm very childish in my personality. So, so that works. Um, but it is challenging. Yeah, you can't do everything. You know, there are some things that, um, games even, that I would do with adults that, especially my class, because my class is um, kids who are mostly German speakers 
Yeah. And they yeah. come their parents want them to go to an English speaking school, natürlich. Mm-hmm. And um so and that's one of the reasons I that, that they hired me for this job is because I've been, you know, I'm trained in I thought language acquisition as well I as thought, teaching children. I thought they hired you because you're childish. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> Both. That's that's the, that's the first thing on my CV. <laughs> and uh, the impression I give across in interviews. So yeah, that's one of the things. <laughs> Do you think you're childish enough to take this position? And you're like, yeah, sure. Just, and then uh, you have do you to, think I'm childish you have, enough? <laughs> you have to prove it. You have to what prove do you it. Think? Are you you will repeat you will repeat what they said. Yeah, I'll repeat and then parrot. I'll like make, make a fart noise or something. Parrot it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's more of a teenager thing to be sarcastic. Yeah. I don't know. Than childish. But yeah. Um I think that's that's the beauty of English teaching, right? Because um, there are so many different ways to teach and so many different sort of g- groups. You can teach age groups, levels. And it's not that everybody wants to do the same thing. I know right, like, when I was teaching in London, I, I, I was so surprised, Rob, that they let me taught. That they let me taught. What the hell? How did they even let me do that? Let me teach. <laughs> Especially, te- you didn't speak like that in the interview, I'm sure. No. <laughs> Please let me talk to these students. Oh, my goodness. You, you need a grammar alarm, I think. You need to come up with a grammar alarm now. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That would just be insulting to the guests. <laughs> to the guest. <laughs> the guests who can't speak English. But at least they would wake up. It would be a wake-up call for them, you know. <laughs> Um, I have an embarrassing grammar story. I'll let you continue what you were saying, though, Zdenek. That's the problem. I don't know anymore. So, oh, okay. I, what, what was I? What was I going to say? Uh, um, that you 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 got the job at uh, what is it? Speak Up London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was surprised. Yeah, in in London, in Oxford Street. And I was surprised that, that surprised. <laughs> that's like an Asian. That's like an Asian thing. You say le instead of re. Oh well, I was been I was surprised. A surprise that they let me teach, not taught, um, or thought, or anything like that. They let me teach the highest levels there, and you know that there was not such a high demand for those levels as I have ex- as I had expected there would be, um, and that's because there are a lot of people who just love teaching low levels or little kids. You know, just everyone is different. Every teacher is different. So this that's why I think this is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've said it before about uh, non-native English teachers that you guys have learned English and you know exactly how to, you know Some how to do it, how to get that skill. Yeah. And well, if you've if you've passed the interview at at an at a, at a English speaking school, then they've clearly, you know, they have faith in your language ability. Mm-hmm. And lots of native English speakers don't know things about grammar. Like if I go and ask. Um, someone from my old school hey just tell me a sentence in the present perfect or in the present continuous like, i don't know what it is and, so, um, is that how they would speak to you yeah, like, i what? don't know what it is you've changed rob <laughs> i don't know what it is <laughs> you don't, don't know even pronounce any, some letter uh, some um sounds right yeah well that's the native english that's my well that's not really the leicester accent i was dumbing it way down but yeah, yeah i i had to when I was doing my CELTA I had to study what all the tenses were I had to learn them and then I didn't know what the first and second conditional was for example and knowing but, it I mean I think grammar can confuse learners sometimes but knowing it helps you be able to teach it should I play devil's advocate or not do it you disagree I actually I actually think what, what you're talking about is the terminology yeah so while I agree it's important to know your grammar I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's it's important, especially nowadays when the so-called lexical approach is the pref- one of the sort of go-to methods. So I, I would say a lot of people these days and in, in English teachers, some of them don't don't use these terms because because they don't they don't know it. Yeah, you are right. But then a lot of them just intentionally um, avoid them. In their teaching, so they like instead of like describing it as present perfect or third conditional or something like that, uh, they would just say this is what we say for this specific context. If mm-hmm. you want to express this meaning, like they would say if uh, if sentences yeah. instead of um, conditionals. Yeah, 
or hypothetical situation, whatever they will uh, explain the use. I don't know where I stand. I think it, it has been quite useful for me to, to learn the, the terms and terminology. And I think it helps you study from books as well. Like once you open a book, like, I don't know, English grammar in use of some, or something like that, it makes things clearer to you. Yeah? So I, 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 I think I'm, I'm on the fence, to be honest, because I also like the other way where, are you going <laughs> to... I was going to, but then I just, I was like, it's, no, that's just going nah, to that's, put him off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it did, it put you off anyway. Yeah. And I didn't even do it. On the fence, you're on the fence. Yeah, nice idiom. Yeah, oh, yeah. I did go off. I did go off. <laughs> There's a delay, but you know, that's okay. It's it's a bit So yeah, you're not sure. You're on the fence. Yeah, I, I like both both ways. I, I understand why both ways work. And it really depends on your preference as a learner, I guess. So I, I guess it's good that I can I can be as a teacher, I can be quite quite flexible with that. But um, I guess I'm moving away from. I'm. I guess I'm moving away from this a little bit. Yeah, I would. I think away from using the grammar terminology. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. I mean, I I can still do it, and I I know some people want it from me, and sometimes it just creeps in. But I think I use it less and less these days. And even grammar as as a as a skill. It's not a skill really. It's a it's like a system. We call it a system, but let's call it a, like a skill. I don't teach it as much as I did in the past. Uh, I focus more on teaching vocabulary and other aspects of the language, pronunciation, grammar. Uh, back in the day when I started teaching, that would be the, the main thing that I, I would teach and I would love teaching. And these days, I can do it really well. I think it's one of my strengths as a teacher, but I just feel like it's not as important as people think. Is it the same with you? Similar, um, yeah, I stopped using, like, having grammar-based lessons. And, yeah, I would say, okay, instead of saying, you know, we're doing the uh, present perfect, I'd say, today we're talking about the difference between did and have done instead of past simple and present perfect. Because um, it's, but it's not really, I think it's based on the students because some students are afraid of grammar and some yeah. students hear present perfect and uh shit themselves that's swear word there you go or soil themselves which is something soil. i learned from your podcast i didn't know that actually <sighs> but now i do when, <laughs> I when feel, I hear someone I say that's so... something i learned from you it's such a <laughs> uh, it's a it's a thrill are you, are you start are you welling up or something I'm welling up yeah <laughs> that's a euphemism as well huh? is it yeah i suppose so because crying to well up instead of to start to cry. Yeah. Oh, it's a fine line between euphemisms and idioms, but yeah, language to avoid taboos. So instead of <laughs> shit yourself, but that would be in the literal sense of actually doing some shit in your trousers. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I'm using it idiomatically, like shit yourself, meaning just to be very scared. They shit themselves when I say we're doing the present perfect today. Right, right. That's actually um, a good point because you've, if if I said I, I saw it myself, it wouldn't be idiomatic enough. Yeah, you are right. I just um, it just came to mind like when you, when you said shit. No, it's good. It's good. But yeah, you know, if you yeah. were working in an old people's home or something, you might oh say, "Oh, uh, Mr. Smith has soiled himself. Could you please sort that out? Because it's yeah. my pay grade." Um, what was I saying? Yeah, but on the other hand, some students love grammar and thrive on grammar and you know, have a more methodical brain and want to have tables in their heads with uh, different things and boxes to follow. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the student, uh, but I can more than when I began my English teaching career, I can now more see the benefit of avoiding grammar terminology so as not to put people off. And that reminds me of the embarrassing grammar mistake that I said I was going to tell you about. Um, so it was during my CELTA when I was learning yep. all of these things about grammar and then putting them into practice in my teaching. And we had like a mid mid course um, in, assessment. Not interview, as, not uh, even tutorial. Assessment, like I meeting, think it's, it used to be called tutorial. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a one on one with the, with the main tutor. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, you know, how's it going? And I said, this is great. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really enjoying learning about grammar because I make less mistakes now. And she said, no, no, no. 
fewer <laughs> you make fewer mistakes now <laughs> so come on that's that's a bit pedantic it is yeah but you know yeah. she is a i know i can't i couldn't tell if she was if she was you know smiling on the inside but she certainly wasn't smiling on the outside rob yeah there is there is loads of people who make mistakes like that oh yeah of course <laughs> i listen to the radio and and, and maybe two or three times a day I, in my head i'm going fewer not less <laughs> um but yeah it's it's a mistake i think it's maybe an outdated piece of grammar there's are lots of these huh? like when people yeah. say how are you i'm good no you're well well <laughs> is the adverb for good if you if you are good you're you know you're like superman he's good yeah. exactly you know it's the language changes over time as well so what may have not been acceptable in the past like split infinitive please google it i'm not gonna go into that but <laughs> split infinitive wouldn't have been acceptable in the past it, it would have been frowned upon um now it seems to be just fine so yeah you know, language changes um i'm trying to split an infinitive right now to example to be an example it might, but, um... be, it might need a knife or something <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, the famous one is to boldly go, isn't it? From Star Trek, to boldly go. But you shouldn't say that because you shouldn't put anything be between to and the verb. It's, um, yeah. To annoyingly do something like that is terrible. To clearly explain it the way you did, Rob. I must give you all the credit. <laughs> oh, brilliant, Zenit. Brilliant. You've woken up that two, that 2.30. What is it? No, it's nearly three o'clock now and you're coming out with crackers yeah. like that. Brilliant. My, my, my brain... I thought it would be running on empty, but it actually it's firing on all cylinders. <laughs> oh, the radium alarm's got to go off. <laughs> I think it, <laughs> I thought it would break. I used two idioms in one cent. <laughs> it almost did because the volume was down on it when I pressed it. I had to turn it up again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking must, of, overloaded. Sh yeah. Should we move on to the stuff that um, we said we were going to do? <laughs> oh, yeah. this is what happens. You see, I. I I get carried away when I record episodes of the podcast with you, but you have prepared something for us. You've got a present for us. What is it, Rob? Thanks a lot for listening. For more information, visit my new website, teachersdenek.com, where you can find out about my speaking group for high-level English learners called the Achievers Chamber and download my free course, Unlocking Your English Potential, Eight Secrets to Fluency. That's teachersdenek.com.